What's up everyone, it's Bones here. In today's video, I'll be showing off the Runic deck, but unlike the Power of the Elements video where I was able to go through multiple matches, because of the lack of matches I was able to find, I'm going to be structuring this one a little bit different. And what I'm going to do here is, I'm going to show a singles match first and then a match after and I'm also doing this because we don't know whether Mystic Mine will still be around when Tactical Masters is TCG legal. But before I begin, if you happen to enjoy content like this and would like to see more, clicking on those thumbs up and subscribe buttons would be greatly appreciated as they go a long way in supporting the channel and show me that you like content like this. So to start the video, the first thing I'm going to read here is Mr. Rune or Runic of the Freezing Curse and it says activate one of these effects. Skip your next battle phase after this card resolves. It's important to note that almost all of your quick plays have this stipulation here and then you can target one effect monster your opponent controls, negate its effects until the end of this turn, then banish the top three cards of their deck and the banishing top cards of their deck for the quick plays are not all the same number but it's a recurring theme in this deck just like the skipping your battle phase so those are two things that you should remember about runic spells or quick play spells rather that a good chunk of them skip your next battle phase and they also banish the top three cards of opponent's deck. And the last one is another one that most of them have also, which you can special summon one runic monster from your extra deck to the extra monster zone, and you can only activate one freezing curse runic per turn. And what the quick plays tend to special summon with the effect here are fusion monsters, but depending on the variant, you really may not special summon them that much which is why Mystic Mine is so good in the deck. And as you can see, we're also playing Sky Strikers, which we know how that works with Mystic Mine. So we'll start here with the tier player going first, and he's also playing the Branded Engine, in which he's going to do Alubur Chain Link 1, Squamata Chain Link 2. Oh, he did it backwards, but we'll see that he's going to send the Beast here, and he's going to draw one, which is the Albaz. He normal summons Rhino Heart. It uses its effect to send Merle. Then Merle will fuse away with itself and the other Merle. And then we'll see Kikalos get its effect, which will add a meta noise. And then from there we'll see Kikalos use its effect, sending itself to the graveyard and special summoning the Merle. Then we'll see the mill 8 as he's going to get a bunch of good mills there, as we see the King of the Swamp, we see another doll, I believe, and we saw Shaylin as well, but we'll see the Branded Fusion come down, and the Lubellion is going to get him into his Mirror Jade, but we'll also see a wind uh, off the Shaylin, and uh, he's going to end here on... Mirror Jade, Drago Stapelia, and Winda, along with the Meta Noise. So I'm going to start my turn, and because I have double mine, I have no reason to fear anything right now. And he's going to chain the Mirror Jade to that, banishing the Merle. And this is kind of another reason why I'm doing the singles. And I added the field spell here of the Mr. Rune Spring, of the Mr. Rune or Runic. And it reads that you can activate runic quick play spell cards from your hand during your opponent's turn. Once per chain, if you activate a runic quick play spell card, you can target up to three quick play spells in your graveyard and place them on the bottom of the deck in any order, then draw that many cards. So it's a very powerful field spell, as you see that there's a whole archetype of quick play runic spells that each do different things and are easy to get into the graveyard. And the ability to allow you to use quick plays on your opponent's turn can help you play around stuff like evenly or even just allow you to keep advantage in hand. So I'm going to set one copy of the Freezing Curse here and I do it because I don't have the field spell, the runic field spell on field so I can't use them from my hand. And my opponent's going to go into Dweller, he's going to use the Fusion Substitute, he's going to draw into Droplet and 
From here, I'm going to draw into another one here, as we see Mr. Rune of the Raging Storm, and it reads, activate one of these effects, skip your next battle phase. After this card resolves, as we saw previously, then banish from the top of your opponent's deck up to the number of cards they control. So as you can see, my opponent controls five cards, we can banish five cards from the top of his deck. And then you can special summon one runic monster from your extra deck to the extra monster zone, and you can activate one Raging Storm runic per turn. So one thing that the pure version is very strong at is, and I call this the pure version, but there is a small Sky Striker engine, which I do run, but there's like no rays or anything. This is just all spells and traps. But between your opponent searching their deck, milling with tier limits, drawing for turn when playing Undermine, I think that the banish effects of these are pretty underrated as resources can start to fly, as we'll see momentarily. So I'm going to use Raging here, and we're going to banish the top five, which hit the Super Poly, one of the traps, a ghost bell and a couple of tier names. I'm then going to use the effect there to negate window. I'm going to use the engage here, which will get me a widow anchor. And then I can draw another card, which gets me a raging storm again. And uh, as you see, he only has about 17 cards left in deck, about to be 16 as he draws the poly for turn. And now during the end phase, because he set a couple of cards, I have no reason to hesitate here, as I'm going to banish 7 from the top of the deck as we see a Galaxy Cyclone. And uh, we'll then use the Freezing Curse here to banish 3 more to, and negate his window. And I'll draw it evenly for turn here, but there's really nothing my opponent can do here. And he is going to use the Tear Spell here, or the Field Spell. And then he's going to chain the Super Poly, fusing away into Dragos to Pelia, adding the Merli, normal summoning the Merli, and my opponent's just going to surrender. So onto the second replay here, and this is one of the variants that I wanted to show, or well, really the only variant that I'll show, and I'll talk about others that you can play later on in the video when I get to the deck profile. But quietly, I think that Magical Musketeers become a stronger deck with the Mr. Rune cards, as the field spell being able to draw cards. The point of the Mr. Rune, which I'll read right now, you can activate one of these effects, skip your next battle phase after this card resolves, as you saw with the previous ones, and this one allows you to add one Mr. Rune card from your deck to your hand, except itself. Then you can banish the top card of your opponent's deck, so it's basically engaged without the draw. And you can special summon one Mr. Rune monster from your extra deck to the extra monster zone. And you can only activate one point of the Mr. Rune per turn. So with all the deck thinning that this engine is able to do for the magical musketeers, I think that this becomes a pretty decent anti-meta option for the format, even if there are better ones out there. So to start the replay, we'll see that it's going to be Exosisters maining Super Poly versus the magical Mr. Runes. And we're going to see the summon. <laughs> He's going to take that back here. As we'll see Starfire be summoned here. And he's going to summon it in defense position as he's going to add Brilliant Flame, which you can activate one of these effects, skip your next battle phase after this card resolves, target one opponent's special summon monster, destroy it, then banish the top two cards of their deck. Then special summon one Mr. Rune monster from your extra deck to the extra monster zone, like the previous cards that we've seen in regards to the quick plays. So we'll see that the... Martha is going to get banished there off of the point, and we're going to see the special summon of Kid Brave as it was activated in Starfire's column, and now we're going to see a Tornado Dragon, and we'll see that we're going to get an activation of the Pot of Prosperity here, it'll banish three, we're going to see the Add of the Martha, so now he has Irene and Martha, and from here we will see the effect of Martha, which will special summon itself along with 
Ellis, and from there we'll see the player in blue go to the battle phase, as we'll see the Martha attempt to attack over the Kid Brave, but that's going to get hit with the Brilliant Flames, which mills the Stella and the Sophia. So from here we'll see the Kid Brave get its effect, pitching the Starfire and drawing two, which happens to be a Freezing Curse and another Starfire. And then we'll see the normal summon of Irene. He'll use its effect, get a D-shifter, go into his Michalis, and then he'll probably, yeah, he will use the Michalis here to add the Returnia, and uh, he'll then use it again to out his monster. As we see the Tornado Dragon go to the graveyard, and he's going to send two... And we'll then see a normal summon of the Caspar, but that's going to get hit with a Super Poly, which will summon Garuda, which is kind of cool to see, as Magical Muskets is one of the decks that do really get hard hit by Garuda being a card now. And we'll see the Brilliant Flames activate here, as it's going to special summon the first fusion that we've seen, and this one is Wings. And it takes two Mr. Rune Monsters or a Quick Play Spell card. And if this card is Special Summoned from the extra deck, you can discard one card. Add one Mr. Rune Field Spell from your deck to the hand. If another card or cards you control would be destroyed by card effect, you can banish this card you control instead. If this card on the field is destroyed by battle or card effect, return it to the extra deck. So the other fusions, I believe, have similar effects to this, where one of them adds the continuous spell deceit of the mr rune and then also it has protection because i don't want to mislead you guys i'll get to that when it gets there so we're going to see the wings use its effect adding the spring and uh, we're going to see the player in red scoop as he really had nothing that he could do there and Going on to game two, we're going to see that the uh, Mr. Rune Musket player is going to open Dispel, and Dispel lets you activate one of these effects, skip your next battle phase after this card resolves. If your opponent adds a card from their deck to the hand, except during the draw phase, discard one random card from their hand, then banish the top two cards of their deck. And you can special summon one Mr. Rune monster from your extra deck to the extra monster zone. You can only activate one Mr. Rune of Dispel per turn. So as you can see, this deck aims to be similar to Sky Strikers, almost with a bunch of Hornet drones, sort of. And uh, just different ways to get advantage, whether it be popping your opponent's monsters, or spells and traps, having a card that can add one the field spell, lets you draw you can also take away resources from your opponent by banishing cards from the top of their deck and when you supplement it with an engine like magical muskets you're able to get even more disruptions which i thought is a cool reason to show this deck but we'll see that the exo sister player actually happened to drop fairly decent as he's going to activate the dark ruler no more but luckily for the Mr. Rune player, the Spring of the Mr. Rune still allows him to use spells from his hand, as we'll see Irene and Martha hit the board, and now we're going to see a special summon, or an exceed summon, of Michalis, and then we'll see the Michalis add the Returnia, and now we're going to see Mr. Rune of Dispel here, which is going to hit the Returnia. And now we'll see a mill two, followed by the effect of Spring, which will shuffle the three Mr. Rune spells, but not before Michalis can use its effect, which will be met by the Freezing Curse. And we'll then see the field spell shuffle back three, and now we're going to see three more cards added to the Magical Musket player's hand. So while this isn't the most competitive deck it's a deck that you have to be careful with because when it's able to amass advantage like this it's not necessarily an easy deck to beat and you have to know how to play around the different interruptions they may have because between the mr Rune interruptions and the magical musket interruptions there can be multiple pops negations and something like dancing needle even provides graveyard banishing along with the fact that they can just expend your resources by banishing them and now we're going to see the exceed summon of magnifica here as we'll see the twin twisters out the field spell 
And uh, then we'll see the set of the Returnia and Pass. So we'll see the Magnifica special summon back the Macalus here. Macalus here is we're going to see the summon of the Fangs here. And this is the second fusion monster they have. I believe that they have one more coming in Tactical Masters. And then the other one is in a future set. But I may be wrong about that. And if this card is special summoned from the extra deck, you can target one Mr. Rune spell in your graveyard except a quick play spell added to your hand cannot be destroyed by card effects. When this card is destroyed by battle, you can target one card on the field, destroy it. So, as you can see, the fusion monsters are either a way to recur your resources or add your starters or rather the cogs in your deck that make it work. And we'll see the normal summon of Starfire here as we're going to see a chain of the Michalis banishing the Starfire. And then we'll get a pass after setting a few cards here as he doesn't have the field spell anymore so he does have to commit to the board. And uh, then we'll see an attack to go straight into Zeus to try to whittle down his resources here, but we will see that get hit by a D barrier. And uh, now we'll see the Exosister player probably add packs here, and that's exactly what we'll see as he's going to put the remaining cards in the bottom of his deck. And from here, he's going to activate the packs, he's going to pay 800, special summon the Stella, and from there we'll see the Exosister player use the Armament in order to special summon an Exceed monster, but he forgets that he was under the barrier. So we'll see he's going to regain the life points there, put it back in hand as they were probably talking about it, and uh, we're going to see the Freezing Curse here get more cards out of the opponent's deck. And then we'll see the addition of Last Stand as it was activated in Casper's zone. And then we'll see the Casper go into the Max here, which is an insane card. And that's going to prompt the player in blue to scoop here. So we'll see both players have very playable hands here as the Exosister player gets both Vadis and Returnia, I believe, as we see the Vadis and Returnia right here. And he also has Ash with the Ellis, which is an Exceed Summon if something moves out of the graveyard. But we'll see the point of the Mr. Rune use its effect, banish a Prosperity from the top, Vadis will then be chained to the Destruction here, and actually I haven't read Destruction. Activate one of these effects, skip your next battle phase after this card resolves, target one spell trap your opponent controls, destroy it, then banish the top four cards of their deck. Then you can special summon one Mr. Rune monster from your extra deck to the extra monster zone. You can only activate one Mr. Rune of Destruction per turn. I'd also like to point out when I'm saying then, I'm not saying that you can do one and then the other. The little bulletin points here indicate which one of these effects here you're activating, just to clarify. So we'll see that the Irene is going to be summoned here, and we're going to get a mill four or banish four off the destruction, and then we'll see the normal summon of... Calamity, which is a musket on board, but he's going to go into the Chaos Max, or the Max first, and uh, we're then going to see the Chain of the Returnia to the Breathing Curse effect, and uh, he may actually be doing this in response to the Field Spell, I'm not sure. So, we're going to see the Banish of the Point there, and he's going to go into Macalus, we're then going to see the Desperado try to pop the Michalis, which is going to be met by the Michalis effect to try and get rid of the field spell, but that's going to get hit by the Freezing Curse. And from there, the field spell will then activate, and it's going to put two back into deck, and he's going to draw it into the range here, which is an interesting choice, but not necessarily necessarily terrible in Magical Musketeers, since it's not a very common scene card, I'll read it here, but Special Summon one monster from your hand, but negate its effects, 
Then immediately after this effect resolves, link summon one link monster using materials you control, which you're basically going into this. And this link summon cannot be negated. Also, your opponent cannot activate cards or effects when a monster is link summoned this way. If a link monster you control is destroyed by battle or card effect while this card is in your graveyard, you can banish this card. Add one monster with the same original type as one of those destroyed monsters from your graveyard to your hand. And you can only activate one into the range per turn. So definitely a crazy card in this deck when it resolves as you're able to make a max that can resolve without interruption. So we're going to see the Exosister player start his turn now as he top decks the Twin Twisters. And we'll see the Gibreen here use its effect to negate the Chaos Max and then run into it, playing around any possible Magical Musket stuff. And we'll also see a Summon of Zeus here. And I think that the reason we saw this is because both Musketeers and Mr. Runes have stuff that can pop opponents' cards and if they target anything else but the Zeus, kind of forces them to have to target the Zeus. As, unfortunately, we'll see a cross domination be the top deck. We'll then see the Zeus come down here. That's going to attack for 3,000. And then we'll see another Spring of the Mister Rune, followed by a Dark Ruler No More top deck, another attack. And uh, now we'll see a top deck Mister Rune of Dispel, which will summon the Fangs here, and then banish two. And then the fangs will get its effect, which can get back the field spell. And then the field spell will attempt to use its effect, but that's going to get hit by the twin twisters. And the Mr. Rune Musket player is just going to reveal the rest of his hand here, as he has nothing. So while the Mr. Rune deck does take the L here, I believe that this replay did do a good job in showing the control element that the deck has, and how it can be applied to different decks like Sky Strikers, Invoked, Trick Stars, things that play Mystic Mine, really. That does come with its downside, as you see the reliance on ha having a field spell on board. So, before I begin the deck profile, I would like to read the wings here, the second pair of wings. And it takes two runic monsters or a quick play runic spell. If this card is special summoned from the extra deck, you can discard one card. Add one continuous spell from your deck to your hand, which ends up being the seed of the Mr. Rune. Which reads, you can only control one deceit. Each time a quick play spell card is activated, banish the top card from your opponent's deck. This one's secondary effect is that when your opponent activates a card or effect that targets the runic cards and or set cards you control, Quick effect, you can banish this card you control, negate the activation, and if you do, destroy that card. Once per turn, during the end phase, you also gain a thousand life points. So, first I'll begin with the card by card, and you'll see that there's three Spring of the Mister Runes, three Mystic Mine, because I think that if you're playing the pure version, you kind of do have to go this route with the Demise of the Lands, the three Trap Tricks, three D Barriers, the three imperms, there's no terraforming, but there is metaverse. Because you play the Sky Striker engine, this could be terraforming. I actually was terraforming before I put metaverse in here. I thought having the option of a chainable mystic mine is pretty strong for a deck that isn't really trying to attack your opponent and is trying to out-resource them. Then we'll see the one deceit of the Mr. Rune. The three point of the Mr. Rune, your engage or your stratos for the deck to play three and uh, this one is sort of like your pseudo afterburners as mentioned before play three of that then target one spell trap your opponent controls i play two of that and then two mr rune of the raging storm here also as can be a good way to spend your opponent's resources even more and we'll see the three freezing curse the three widow anchor basically same purpose except one banishes the top three of the deck one control of an opponent's monster the uh, one hornet drones the one engage upstart goblin set rotation the three trap trick three d barrier and three imperms unless your hand is clogged with field spells a lot of the times you're going to be setting four or five so when playing this deck be prepared for that now onto the extra deck we'll see 
the two female wings, the one male wings, the fangs, the one access code, the unicorn, the phoenix, the Zeke, the Kana, two of each Sky Striker name here because we're only playing the one engage, one drones, the widow anchors, and I have the shark cannons and the afterburner. I did as you can see because I wanted to run this engine because of its ability to debarrier and stop a turn which can just get you into phase to beat their board or fortify your board in order so that they can't break it and get you in a position where you can mill them out so onto the side deck and aside three sky striker cards here we'll see the one pink the three crow the three dark rulers the three twin twisters for the anti-spells, I still think it's important to play around anti-spell, especially in a 30-card spell deck. And then the one Harpy's Feather Duster and the one Red Reboot round out the deck profile. Lastly, I'd like to go over the other Mr. Rune cards that may not see as much play, just didn't see play in this video. Activate one of these effects, skip your next battle phase after this card resolves. Your opponent draws one card, then you banish the top four cards of their deck. Special summon one runic monster from your extra deck to the extra monster zone, and you can only activate one of those per turn. Also have the slumber runic, which has the same battle phase skipping effect. You can target one face up monster on the field, apply this effect to it, then banish the top three cards of your opponent's deck. Once applied this turn, that monster cannot attack. Also, the next time it would be destroyed by battle or card effect, it is not destroyed. And you can special summon one runic monster from your extra deck to the extra monster zone, and you can only activate one slumber runic per turn. Brecky here is one of the new ones. I'm only going to go over it because I'm unsure if we get it here or in future set, but an attack is declared involving this card in the extra monster zone. You can banish the top two cards of your opponent's deck. Neither player takes battle damage from the battles involving this card. If this card on the field is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can target one runic quick play spell in their graveyard and add it to your hand. You can only use this effect of Freki, the runic fangs, once per turn. I hope that pretty much wraps up everything that need to know in order to start off with this deck. I apologize I wasn't able to get more replays. As mentioned, just the last few days it's been really rough to come by any Tactical Masters replays as the hype on Power of the Elements is still strong. Anyways, if you made it this far into the video, I thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed. If you have any suggestions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. Improving the player base Including myself is one of the things that I would like to see be a thing in my comment section, but anyways, it's Bones, signing out.